Welcome to St. Michael's Uniting Church online gathering. I'm Margaret Maiman, Minister of St. Michael's. Wherever you have come from, wherever you're going to, whatever you believe, whatever you do not believe, you are welcome here. At St. Michael's, we acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, traditional owners of the land on which our church stands. And today we also acknowledge other indigenous people on whose land you and others who are participating in the service live. We honour their elders past, present and emerging and with other indigenous people, we pray for justice for the people and for the land. This is our 10th online service. What initially seemed strange is now strangely familiar. But while we do not know how long this will last, we don't want to become too accustomed to it either. I miss seeing people on Sunday. And for those of you who are watching who are members of St. Michael's, I know you look forward to seeing one another again. From the, for those of you who are from other places, I imagine that you are also longing for reconnection with your community. In the midst of this connection and disconnection, today we will hear words from John's Gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In that spirit, in the comfort of the words of Jesus, let us come into a time of reflection and communion with one another, even though we cannot see one another. In the companionship, in the silences, in the spaces, in the connections, may we honour divine presence and know divine peace. And let us sing together, Be Not Afraid. For one day you shall laugh 
Let us open ourselves to awareness of the sacred in our prayers. Let us pray. We rejoice in the breath of life, breathing life and vitality into our world, into our lives and into this time we spend together, connecting us at the deepest level with all that exists. We rejoice in the wonder of who we are, bearers of the breath of life, blessed by our awareness of this and challenged by this blessing to allow the breath full expression in our living and loving. We open ourselves to the one who has formed the earth and breathes life into the universe, who accompanies us in our troubles and calls us to travel into new places, who longs for justice and yearns for peace. May the divine presence strengthen our community and enlarge our faith. In dwelling in sacred power, we know our own power. Together we can make possible justice and love. We are all connected. We depend upon one another more than we know. We are one body. So may it be. And remembering Jesus, who showed us the way, we pray together. God, you are life for us. Holy be your name. Your new day come, your will be done on earth as in your vision. Give us this day our bread for the morrow and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Strengthen us in the time of test and deliver us from evil for the power and the splendor and the fulfillment are yours now and forever. Amen. We were not made to hide our light. We did not receive life in order to quench it. We are human beings in the likeness of God, loved and forgiven, made for abundant life. Alleluia, amen. At this time in worship, we greet one another with a sign of peace. And even though we are dispersed in this time of connection, let us still offer one another a sign of the peace. So as I offer words of peace to you, I invite you to share peace with those with whom you gather. It might be members of your family, it might be a beloved creature or pet who is part of your life. And I also invite you to extend that sense of sharing peace to others in the community in which you live and to, the, to our world, which so desperately needs peace at this time. May the peace of divine presence be with you. Amen.
Listen for the words of faith in the Gospel of John, 
chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In God's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to Abba God except through me. If you know me, you will know Abba God also. From now on, you do know Abba God and you have seen Abba God. Philip said to him, Rabbi, show us Abba God and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen Abba God. How can you say, Show us your Abba. Do you not believe that I am in Abba God and God is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but is it God, Abba God who dwells in me, who is accomplishing God's works. Believe me that I am in God and God is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these. Why? Because I am going to Abba God and whatever you ask in my name, I will do. For the stories of Jesus and the beloved community of friends, we give thanks. The contemporary reading is a poem by Mary Oliver titled, I Worried. I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught? And if not, how shall I correct it? Was I right? Was I wrong? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? Will I ever be able to sing? Even the sparrows can do it. And I am, well, hopeless. Is my eyesight fading or am I just imagining it? Am I going to get rheumatism, lockjaw, dementia? Finally, I saw that worrying had come to nothing and gave it up and took my old body and went out into the morning and sang. For the word that was in the beginning, for the word that invites and inspires, for the word embodied in us, we give thanks. May God open our eyes to see our ears to hear, and our hearts to love. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. This gospel reading takes us back to before Jesus' death, to the last meal that he shared with his friends. He washed their feet, gave them the new commandment, foretold Peter's denial and Judas' betrayal. And he told his friends that he was about to leave them. 
Where I am going, you cannot follow now. The disciples are fearful, anxious, and confused. How will they be? Who will they be without him? What has his life meant? What will his death mean? How can they hold on to him if he is going to a place that they cannot follow? How will they go on in the face of pain and loss? This year, more than most, I can identify with the fear experienced by the disciples. Our hearts are troubled. Our world is floating adrift from its moorings. So much that was taken for granted is no longer reliable. So much that of what was predictable is no longer guaranteed. I wonder if you also scour the news at the beginning and the end of the day, seeking Ill information about the spread of illness and death, seeking to understand the political and economic implications of the pandemic, the loss of jobs and failure of businesses, increases in domestic violence, addiction and mental illness. I am distressed by the security camera footage replayed frequently on the evening news, showing young women being racially harassed and beaten by people who blame Chinese Australians for the spread of COVID-19. This violence took place not far from St Michael's. But as I read, I am also searching for signs of hope, holding on to stories of compassion and kindness on the part of ordinary people. On the evening news this week, I watched the joy on the faces of people who had flown back to Australia two weeks ago and were now emerging from quarantine. At home, safe, reunited with their friends. In all my searching and sifting through the news, still there are no clear-cut answers about when it will end and no way to fully comprehend the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic for our families, our city, our nation, and our world. In John's Gospel, Thomas asked for directions. Philip asked for guidance. A roadmap or step-by-step -step instructions would be useful. There are no clear-cut answers here either but simply an enigmatic reply from Jesus about dwelling places, pointing to the spaciousness of the sacred to which he is returning, and an assurance to the disciples that they belong, that they are included. The word for dwelling places is grammatically linked to the concept of abiding in John's Gospel. In the next chapter, Jesus tells the disciples Abide with me. From the place of vulnerability comes an invitation to abide or to dwell with the sacred. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It's not a pep talk about getting it together or putting on a brave face. The New Revised Standard Version translates what follows as believe in God, believe also in me. The church has, unhelpfully I think, come to understand Jesus' instruction as a command to believe certain things about God, about Jesus and about sin. A better translation is, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. This story is emblematic of our struggles with the mystery that we name God. We have to let go of it in order to find it. 13th century mystic Meister Eckhart wrote, let us pray to God that we may be free of God. He understood that our conceptions of God, our talk of the sacred, cannot pin down the mystery of the divine. In Jesus, his friends experienced the mystery of incarnation, 
the holy participating in the human. They had struggled with what he taught. They had resisted the path that he chose, the path that led him into conflict with political and religious authorities. They also shared the intimacy of meals with him and times of wisdom and teaching. Now he was leaving them, but not leaving them alone. The writer of the gospel, probably a disciple of John's, is writing during the time of the Roman Emperor Diocletian near the end of the first century. It's a time when persecution of Christians had become vicious and was being encouraged through most of the Roman Empire. So the writer wants to remind his hearers of the promises of Jesus. And to the message in these words, attributed to Jesus before his death, is that we are not abandoned, that we are not alone, that the God of Jesus is like the Jesus that the disciples had known and loved. In his book, Speaking Christian, Marcus Borg wrote, to say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life is to say that what we see in Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The way is what we see in his life. We see a life of loving God and loving others, a life of challenging the powers that oppress this world, a life radically centered in God the God to whom Jesus bore witness. This is the life-giving meaning of this passage, that God is like the Jesus that the disciples have known so intimately, filled with love, filled with compassion, yearning for justice. This context enables us to understand the words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that have been erroneously used to judge and exclude, and even justify violence against people of other faiths, races, or cultures. Sadly, Jesus' words, which were intended to draw us toward the divine, have been used to make Jesus seem like some kind of heavenly bouncer, keeping people away from God, especially people without faith or people with not enough faith or people who express their faith differently. And so let me return to the opening words of promise and presence. Fear not, be not afraid, do not let your hearts be troubled. These are all phrases from the post-Easter tradition of Jesus' community. What do they mean for us now? I don't think that they mean that we should never be afraid or troubled or worried or anxious. The early Christians for whom this passage was written had good reason to be afraid. Suffering started early in the history of Christianity from the death of Jesus through the persecution of his friends and followers. Today's suffering in many parts of the globe makes us troubled, not only for ourselves, but for others who are experiencing war, dislocation, genocide, pandemics, or natural disasters. What we are asked to distinguish here is appropriate fear from fear that limits our lives and encounters with others. Fear of the coronavirus that impels us to wash our hands, stop touching our faces, and maintain physical distance between ourselves and others is sensible fear. What trusting in the God of Jesus adds to sensible fear is a refusal to let it paralyze us or limit our ability to live our lives to the full. Trust in divine presence adds resistance to letting fear impede our connection with others who look, act, believe, or even vote differently from us. The writer of John's Gospel 
has Jesus speak to his companions of abiding, of many abiding places where there is room for all. And he does this in order to encourage them to stir their hope, echoing the call of Jesus to live fully now and throughout their earthly lives. The early church grew and spread because a small group of people put their fears behind them and risked everything for the sake of the good news that had been announced by Jesus. The spirit of Jesus, the spirit of God, a spirit of passion, zeal and courage permeated their lives. Today, these words, heard in the midst of realities of injustice and suffering in our world, remind us, just as Mary Oliver does, that even in the midst of this, we may live fully, breathing the air, taking our old or young bodies out into the morning sun and singing. Where are you living these days? Where are you making your home? How do you make your journey, your path in life, a spacious, generous dwelling place? And if you question God talk, trust that God is the way, the way that Jesus spoke of and lived out. Trust in this way of compassion, assuring us that there is a place for us and know that the meaning of life is to share that compassion with the world. May God bless our journey together as the online community of St. Michael's Uniting Church, in which everyone who is watching and participating in this service today is included. And may we have the courage and the strength to continue to create a dwelling place for each other and for people in our communities in this time of pandemic and in whatever lies ahead of us. May God bless us and go with us. Amen. And reminding ourselves of who we are and to whom we belong, please join in singing, We Are Your People.
Let us pray in thanksgiving and in solidarity. God of life and love, we offer our prayers for our world and for all the people and creatures with whom we share it. Remind us that wherever people are hurting, you too are wounded, and that wherever people respond in loving service and advocacy for justice, you are there with them. We pray for people who are in distress, struggling to make ends meet, in relationships that are falling apart, forgotten, sleeping in the streets, incarcerated in institutions, sick in body, mind or spirit. Help us to show one another the respect, kindness and love that you have for us all. And we pray for a world where truth is known and told, for thinkers who help us understand the complexities of our life together and encourage us in the hard work of seeking solutions for people and for the planet Earth. We pray for the way, the truth and the life of love and liberation. In your many names, O oh God, we pray. Amen. A blessing for the week that lies ahead of us until we meet again. Go in peace. Hold in your heart the certainty that the spirit of life is with us always. When our hearts are broken and when we are afraid or when we soar with joy, we are never alone, never apart from the spirit that dwells with us and cherishes us always. Go into the week in faith and may each day be born of God. Each hour be a journey in the community of Christ and each moment be filled with the grace of the Spirit. Amen.